bears look fucking shitty with your hair, ya whore. <laughs> A decade ago, Mrs. Punkin was the most notorious troll on the knots.com, a reputable wedding planning message board I relied on while planning my wedding. I wanted to be able to pull off the perfect Martha Stewart wedding with zero event planning skills under my belt. I wanted my hair to be, you know, simple, but elegant, but intricate, but simple. <laughs> I wanted everything natural with shades of off-white and pale green and pale yellow, though it looked fucking shitty with my hair. <laughs> and I needed it all to seem effortless, <laughs> despite the year it took to pull it off. With hundreds of hopeful, eager brides and a handful of grooms all trying to juggle the high-stress task of pulling off a wedding, emotions were high, patience was thin, and the message board was popping. And Amy Loves Ryan was by far the most popular girl on the boards. She was witty, cute, had a dreamboat fiancé, and always had something nice and helpful to say. Desperate brides often sought her out, paging her on the board to ask a specific question or even just to say hi. When she addressed me directly, I would quietly squeal at my desk, the popular girl, she knows who I am. I'll never watch this monitor again. <laughs> Amy loves Ryan's perfect fiance, the eponymous Ryan, created his own not account and would come on periodically to charm the rest of us who were, to some degree, slightly dissatisfied with our chosen grooms. <laughs> My fiance loved me and wanted to marry me, but he didn't give a shit about Ikebana centerpieces or which crate and barrel dishes go with the directions barware. <laughs> Ryan posted pictures of the house he bought for Amy Loves Ryan or left sweet messages for her to find later. Aww, we'd type in unison. <laughs> Amy and Ryan seemed to be winning at this bride and groom thing. Mrs. Punkin chimed in with, how's your thinning hair, Ryan? <laughs> in addition to discussions like, which color of sage green silk works best for my BMs? A BM is what we call the shit-tastic role of bridesmaids. <laughs> we also had a surprising amount of off-topic conversation about politics, cooking, or TV. I became friends with these screen names. Everyone had their reasons for choosing cryptic screen names, but for me, I just didn't want my boss coming on and finding out exactly how I spent the work day. That's not me, that's hippie bride SD. <laughs> we presented ourselves as macrocosms of our wedding taste. If I had a picture of organic hemp ribboned mason jar fairy lanterns in my bio, then obviously I was an organic hemp ribboned mason jar fairy myself. <laughs> I told my not friends things I wouldn't dream of telling my real life friends. We all did. Insecurities about our relationships, kinky stuff about sex, shortcomings at work, and catty gripes about the godforsaken in-laws. This was all generally met with support on the forum, but Mrs. Punkin, like a schoolyard bully, would give us wedding geeks our digital wedgies. <laughs> your fiancé sounds like a douchebag, and so do you. <laughs> and your engagement ring is microscopic, <laughs> ya whore. <laughs> You'd never hear Amy Loves Ryan say something so mean. She and her inner circle were incredibly sweet. I wanted to be part of it. I wanted them to notice me. I wanted them to care about my rustically elegant burlap tablecloths, which might poison the $47 a plate portobello risotto with formaldehyde. I quickly became addicted to the site, the advice, the support, and yeah, the drama. I looked forward to checking in with my not friends when I got to work. I eventually formed a handful of intimate relationships, local and worldwide, that have become pretty amazing. Since then, they've held my babies, I've met their sisters, and we still tell each other all the things we wouldn't dream of telling our real-life friends. Our bridal sisterhood stemmed from needing to relate to someone. 
Mrs. Punkin needed to make us cry. Mrs. Punkin stepped up her game. Her trolling became dis indiscriminate and unapologetic. She was officially banned from the boards often, but kept returning with slight variances in screen name, zero variance in attitude. Almost all of us fell victim to her meanness at some point, but she focused her aggression on Amy Loves Ryan. <laughs> but Amy Loves Ryan was busy. She announced that she was pregnant. A month or two later, the first ultrasound pictures emerged announcing to wins. Twins, ah, Amy wrote as a caption, and in asterisks, the words, shakes head. <laughs> she was so cool. And so it was that I started using asterisks wherever and whenever I could. Shakes head. And soon thereafter, Amy and Ryan got married, and a flowery recap appeared on the site. Their wedding sounded straight out of a magazine. Perfect island destination, loving, doting partner, a dreamy life with a soon-to-be happy nuclear family on the way. The recap she posted was delightful and funny. She didn't even fret when she mentioned the pictures of her special day were ruined. Something went wrong with the photographer. We could not fathom the injustice of losing one's wedding pictures. We showered Amy Loves Ryan with condolences and pity. Oh my God, you must be devastated. I can't even imagine what you're going through. It would be like your special day didn't even happen. <laughs> What a shame, nobody gets to see your baby bump, you fat whore. <laughs> a few days later, I arrived at work, turned on my massive CRT monitor, opened my work email as a cover, and pointed my browser to the not.com, my morning ritual. I had two hours before my first meeting. And as the pretty graphics loaded and the pop-up sepia-toned bridal supply advertisements flashed on the screen, I saw absolute mayhem <laughs> on the message board. <laughs> Punkin, it seemed, had the proof. She had found Amy Loves Ryan's exact ultrasound and belly photos on a pregnancy forum. Come to think of it, those floral print maternity shirts were a bit tacky for Amy. And the picture of Amy and Ryan was actually a pair of models from a magazine. It was clear, Amy Loves Ryan wasn't our darling golden girl at all. Mrs. Punkin, the unsung hero, had unmasked one of the biggest ruses in bridal internet history. <laughs> I remember wanting to stand up and shout to my coworkers over the pale blue carpeted cubicle walls. Are you seeing this? <laughs> but no, nobody was seeing this. Later that day, Amy's cousin emerged and begged for mercy. And could we please just be kind to Amy? Because she was just so, so sad. She lost the babies and then Ryan left her. And now this, <laughs> the cousin Hail Mary toss didn't help. It's one thing to betray all your female internet friends. <laughs> it's another thing to fake a pregnancy. <laughs> but faking a miscarriage, game over. <laughs> Amy loves Ryan. Over a decade later, after 10 trying years of marriage, the fact that I gave anything more than a passing nod to the intricate details of our wedding day or the intricate details of message board bullshit is hard to comprehend and a little embarrassing. No sleek, elegant hairstyle could have prepared me for the fights and the disconnections and how much fucking work a marriage takes. My marriage is not pretty, it's not perfect, but it's real. So as compelled as I felt to compete with a made-up magazine-clipped wedding, my husband and I are real. My husband and I are still here. 
my husband and I win. No one ever heard from Amy Loves Ryan again. <laughs> Mrs. Punkin, her real name's Leslie Fitz. I looked her up, and she's into roller derby now. <laughs> she calls herself the squash. <laughs> After Mrs. Punkin's revelation, we all had a newfound respect for her. In a fantasy world, she gave us a healthy reality check. The very next day, Mrs. Punkin posted on someone's recipe request. Baked beans are a side dish. Ya whore! Oh, Julia Evans, first time banqueteer.